We are back on Get Up with Russell Wilson, who made all the headlines earlier this week when he expressed frustration over his input on personnel issues and the amount of times he gets hit over the course of a season. Could this possibly be another name that we add to the quarterback carousel? It seems incredibly difficult to picture, and yet this is the conversation that is being had. So let me bring the crew in here, and Jeremy Fowler, let me come to you, and I'm going to ask the question probably not, not the best of ways, but it's the only thing I can think of. How big a deal should we be making of this, what seems to be some frustration between the Seahawks and Russell Wilson? Well, Granny, it's a big deal because there is tension. You know, I'm told that Russell Wilson was frustrated because, you know, he had said some things privately to the team, and maybe he felt like he wasn't being heard, so he went public. And meanwhile, the Seahawks are not overly happy that he did so, that, you know, they would prefer that he would have kept things under wraps. Now, it's not a big deal because I'm told from a source they believe this is fixable. The coach Pete Carroll loves Russell Wilson, and he is hearing him right now about his offensive line issues. The truth is the Seahawks have not drafted well at offensive line over the last 10 years, and they have to get some things fixed. So they are on the same page there. Russell Wilson has not requested a trade. I don't expect him to do so unless things go really south. The Seahawks are telling teams a hard no that they're not moving them. So they have to mend some things for sure, and they're going to get to work on that. It's a fluid situation from that regard, but there's nothing imminent about him being moved by any stretch. Okay, fair enough. So, Bart Scott, I come to you. What is your perspective on this situation? Maybe not what we were expecting. A little miffed is Russell Wilson. Yeah, I tell you what, Granny, uh, about a year ago, we got really excited because him and Sierra was, you know, buying a place out here in New York, and we thought maybe this was an indication that he wanted to come, you know, to, to the East Coast so that she can be in a bigger market to do her work. But um, listen, this is more a little, little bit to say about nothing. This is, once again, an example of the LeBronization of the, of the NFL, right? This is about uh, Russell Wilson applying pressure to the team and saying, listen, I'm running for my life. I had Chad Willer sitting out there trying to protect me during the playoffs, and I'm sitting up there running around and running for my life. I've been sacked 100 times more than anybody else since I've been in the league. You, we, we see that he's a family man. He's tired of taking these hits. He's saying, go out there and get me an offensive line. Dwayne Brown was a good pickup last year. I mean, uh, I mean, last time. But they don't have any good players in their prime. They got Mike Upati, who's seen his better days, who can't stay healthy. Go out there. Go get me Brandon Sheriff. Go get me Joe Tooney. Go out there and get me a stud because I'm a stud. And may I just say that no one is more of a stud than Rob Ninkovich. Before I get your comments, Chrissy, can we take a full shot of Rob Ninkovich? You knew we were talking about Russell Wilson today. And as a consequence, you put that picture <laughs> of you sacking Russell Wilson. That's not the same picture that was up there the last time I saw you. No, of course not. I mean, you have to have some type of subject matter, and your background has to represent that, correct? So uh, I figured, why not put a picture of me sacking Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl, probably one of the biggest plays of the game. But let's not – no, actually, Malcolm, yes. you had a big play too. But anyway, let's, let's move on to the Russell Wilson thing. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's going to be there. Pete Carroll's too smart. He understands, look, let's make him happy. And to, not to mention – DK Metcalf is the receiver on that team. If you're a quarterback, you don't want to go to another team and, and leave one of the best, if not the best, up and coming wide receiver in the NFL. So they're going to figure it out. They're going to get him some help. They did bring in Dwayne Brown, um, like Bart said, to try and help him out. But it's going to take maybe an interior piece like Tooney. He's a great player. He's going to get paid. So go out there, get him an offensive line. But he's not going anywhere. He, they're too talented. DK Metcalf's on the roster. He doesn't want to go somewhere else and throw the football. Yeah, and you can't complain too much about their but drafting like, when they took him in the second round. Go ahead, Bart. Yeah, I mean, they're looking within that. He's looking within that division. He sees the Rams coming. He knows that the Cardinals are right there, and San Francisco's going to be back. So he, he's looking up at the division now, not looking down like he's accustomed to. Yeah, look, I mean, the, the life comes yeah, at you fast. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, just a quick point uh, to what Bart said. I talked to a Pro Bowl linebacker yesterday, and they said, follow the money. When a guy gets $35, $40 million, he's going to flex more because the money equals the power, and that's what you're seeing with Russell Wilson. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.